Well, this is very exciting. A first here on First Take, the one and only, the Hall of Famer, Brett Favre. Brett, good morning. There's no question that uh, he's in the conversation. Too young. Max? Now, I would say that that's right if you say greatest ever. I mean, we're parsing words here, but, but he has not, he's not going to be most accomplished. In terms of who I've put my eyes on and said, that guy is, his, the peaks he hit are already, oh, my God. Brett, he's like you, and take, take away the turnovers. Like, before his first, yeah. before the, and you're yeah, one of the greatest who ever lived. Before his first uh, game, when you just saw him, like, preseason, it was like, I, I came out on first take and said, I'm going to tell my grandkids I saw this guy throw. It sounds ridiculous, but you're one of the names I mentioned in terms of the electricity of his arm. And since then, he threw 50 touchdowns to 12 interceptions, won the MVP, followed that up by improving that ratio on the Super Bowl MVP. He might do both this year. Brett Favre, I must confess, I'm actually uh, uh, shocked. I mean, you, your first appearance on the show here and the first words out of your mouth, you completely agree with me. I'm very stunned, but pleasantly <laughs> so, I might add, because I've been trying to tell Max this. I mean, you know, I mean, the, the, the dude is phenomenal thus far, but longevity matters. Consistency matters. Doing it over a long period of time matters. And to just summarily just dismiss the Aaron Rodgers of the world and others and just elevate this guy after a couple of years I felt was absolutely positively ridiculous we've argued about it on many occasions and then the one and only Brett Favre in his very first appearance on first take comes on the show and agrees with <laughs> me I'm very touched no, that's sir. not actually what I'm just very happened touched. but nice try I'm very nice touched Brett, Brett gets the final word here Max Brett gets the final word on Mahomes then we'll move on no we all agree uh, the guy's great what he's accomplished so far is outstanding. I, I, I agree with Max. He, I mean, one turnover this year is incredible. Uh, to be a gunslinger, uh, you would think that you would turn the ball over. I mean, a, at least a tip, a ball or something. But uh, mm -hmm. very impressive. It's just a little too early. I hear you. All right, next topic we got here. Team and coaching staff uh, rises up to his level of play. Um, and the ball bounces their way. But, I, but there's no question that he will do all that he is capable of, which is quite a bit, uh, in order to get there. Yeah, I don't have confidence that he'll win another one. I agree um, with you, Brett. He's, he's great. He is an amazing talent. He'll do his part. But considering they never draft in the first round for offensive weapons, they believe they can find guys and coach him up. And they've done a pretty good job of that. Well, damn, that defense must be amazing, right, in that case? No, it's not. And then they draft his successor when they just won 13 games and beat Seattle and wound up in the NFC Championship game. Instead of giving him the best chance to win right now, I don't have confidence he wins another in Green Bay. I mean, I just don't know what to say. I mean, I'm just very, very touched. I mean, it, 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 Brett Favre is 2-0 right now. I mean, both, <laughs> both points were right <laughs> on point because here's the deal. Aaron Rodgers, as phenomenal as he is, I mean, c to considering, and I'm not trying to not, I mean, Devontae Adams can play, Marquez Stan you know, Valdez Scantlin can play, and I got all of that. But Brett Favre, you can appreciate what I'm about to say to you, even though you didn't win the Super Bowl with him because he retired a couple of years earlier. Earlier, obviously, the, you know, for health issues, Sterling Sharp, one of the great, great receivers to have ever played football that is not mentioned nearly as much as he should. You know, your first year, your first few years in Green Bay, you career. had somebody like that. Uh, uh Aaron Rodgers ain't had anybody like that. And instead of getting somebody in the draft, maybe a DK Metcalf or somebody, what do the Green Bay Packers go out and do? They draft his successor. Go figure. Brett Favre, you're 2-0 right now. A perfect, a perfect appearance on first take <laughs> thus far, my brother, I must say. Wait, before we move on, Brett, I have to say this to you because you said. I don't want to be like everyone else. He's in for the touchdown. Lamar Jackson. They are contenders for sure. Can't hold him back forever. Showtime Mahomes. You keep surprising everybody every single week. This guy is going to be the future of the Baltimore Ravens. Jackson fooled everybody. He looked like a video game. I love road games. I just want to make it my own. Got a hell of an opportunity today. Hell of an opportunity to go out there and protect our health.
Nothing better than some NFL football. Cannot wait for that when everything can resume safely. Look who's here. Our quarterback, Dan Orlovsky, in the house. Of course, Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman. Your guys, I'm Molly Karam Rose. Gentlemen, hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Let's continue it. It's never too early to talk MVP. So who will be this season, you ask? Well, let me tell you, marinate on this, folks, okay? According to our friends at Caesar Sportsbook, reigning MVP Patrick Mahomes opened as a 4-1 to favorite. Lamar Jackson coming in second at 13-2. to A bit of a surprise at number three. Listen to this, Dan. Dak Prescott, followed by Russell Wilson, Tom Brady tied with Kyler Murray for fifth best odds at MVP. Oh, have the mighty fallen. Uh, Max Kellerman, you're up first. Who's the biggest threat to Mahomes for MVP this season? The regular season reigning MVP, Lamar Jackson. I told you guys for a while now, and I, I gave Warren Sharp of Sharp Analytics credit, of course. Lamar Jackson was the most accurate 21-year-old passer in the history of the NFL. So the fact that he wasn't accurate by the standards of elite quarterbacks, you have to factor in his age. He's gotten better and better every season. And then last season, as Dan Orlovsky, you've pointed out with the three tight end sets and everything, he was the most valuable player of the league. So that guy who has probably not yet entered his prime, at least not as a passer, you get him two sure-handed receivers in the draft, he was on a 14-win team last year, and he was the whole offense, right? Like, the whole thing is predicated on what he can do. Even if that team goes backwards and only wins 12 games and Lamar Jackson shows improvement, he remains the biggest threat to Patrick Mahomes as the most valuable player in the NFL. I disagree. Um, I disagree, and that's not taking anything away from Lamar Jackson. I think he's electrifying, and obviously we're running the football, um, and, and he has improved his accuracy. He deserves a lot of credit, but I think that the division is going to be a little bit tougher this year. The Browns have upgraded the coaching position as far as I'm concerned with Stefanski. The Steelers got Big Ben Roethlisberger returning. I think there's going to be tough going in that division alone, let alone the rest of the AFC, so we can't ignore that reality. Then I have to look at it from this, this perspective. I'm all about Tom Brady right now. Uh, Godwin and Evans, along with O.J. Howard and Cameron Brait, with Tom Brady behind center. This is a guy that hasn't thrown more than 13 interceptions in a season since like 2008 or something along those lines. This guy is coming in there. He's highly motivated. He's going to be playing. I'm sure I'm not going to say a running gun NFC South, but damn it, it's pretty close when you consider how New Orleans plays. Uh, the kind of potency that the Atlanta Falcons should have on the offensive side of the ball with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones uh, and Calvin Ridley and those boys. I'm of the mindset that on a lot of occasions, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to have to put up points in order to win games. And if they're going to have to put up points in all likelihood, it's going to be through the air as opposed to on the ground, particularly with the weapons that he has available by virtue of style of play alone. The competition that he's going against combined with the weapons that he has available to him. I think the way to go in this particular question is regarding Tom Brady. I mean, they're both great answers, guys. I would go with Russell Wilson. You know, over the last three years, no quarterback leads or no one has more touchdowns accounted for than Russell Wilson. And if I look at the makeup of their team, first of all, you get a second-year player in DK Metcalf that's in the same system, and that matters this year. And usually when you take these second-year receivers and expect their growth, you can go, okay, probably going to get another 20 to 25 catches, another three or 400 yards, and, you know, maybe a another two or three touchdowns well last year he had about 60 catches 900 yards and seven touchdowns so we're looking at a guy in DK Metcalf that could go up to 80 catches 12 1300 yards and 10 plus touchdowns and then Tyler Lockett's another thousand yard receiver almost annually so that's a really good one two combination and then the addition of Greg Olson like Greg Olson really hasn't had a receiver outside of him in the likes of DK Metcalf, Metcalf and Lockett probably since Steve Smith down in Carolina 
So if Greg is healthy, those are three really, three really good re weapons for Russell Wilson, who was really one, two, one, two, three last year in the MVP race. Hey, and the additions that they made to their football team are going to be massive. Also, a better offensive line. The two caveats that I would have for you guys, and Stephen, I know you want to talk, but the two caveats I would have is I do think it's going to take Tampa Bay a month to get up to speed because there's not going to be much offseason. They're going to be a drastically different offense in the back end of November and December than they will in September. And then, Max, I, I love Lamar Jackson and the point. The two kind of maybe asterisks I have for – conversation is, how do they replace Marshall Yonda? That's a huge question. And then the, they traded Hayden Hurst. So that really made that three tight end package at least different. How do they replace those two players? But I think they're all three great options. Well, Dan, I think your argument would be better served if we're talking about who's the stiffest competition in the NFC, who could ultimately make the Super Bowl and things of that nature. When you're talking about the MVP, you're talking about a specific individual. And the reason why I wouldn't pick Russell Wilson is because I'm thinking about Carson and Penny running, running in, the, in the backfield. These guys run the ball very, very effectively. And Pete Carroll has no problem whatsoever giving it to them to move the chains. That's how Seattle usually beats you. It's not that Russell Wilson can't yeah. make a big play. He certainly extends plays. We get all of that, but the, they usually go the methodical route in order to, ch in, in terms of chopping you but down. But Russell Wilson and isn't you, not just defensively, but offensively. Hold on, Max. But the thing about it is, is that when you look at Tom Brady, I think that they'll be putting the ball in the air more than Seattle, and that's why I'm thinking Tom Brady as opposed to Russell Wilson. Ru Russell Wilson's a great pick any year because many years he's right there, top two or three. He right. just hasn't had that one season that jumps out at you as better than everyone else. And at a certain point, he may be the sentimental favorite. Although I think if Brady is close, Brady's the sentimental favorite, even though he's won before. Uh, but Russell Wilson is a great pick. I want to get back to Lamar Jackson. Guys, independent of what other, the other stuff around him, they're going to run the offense through him. And, and, you know, when I talk about, well, mm -hmm. he, he's the most accurate age 21 passer in history, and then every year he's getting better. As a rookie, he was a better passer as a rookie, at least according to the stats, than Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck, Carson Wentz, and several, like, uh, uh, obviously Trubisky, but Jared Goff. He was more accurate as a rookie than a lot of those guys we think of as really accurate passers. And he was younger than most of them when he was a rookie. So his natural passing talent, just passing talent, is severely underrated. And let's not forget, even if the division gets better, I don't view it that a, way. that's a 14-win team. A 14-win team. He just steered to that, well, to that record. Well, let me address what you're saying. Let me address what you're saying. The reason why, and, and, and I'll defer to you, Dan, with this, but the reason why I'm, I'm basically opposed to what Max is saying in terms of the accuracy of Lamar Jackson, I'm not trying to take away anything from him. a matter of fact, I'm giving him the props that he deserves. He is an electrifying talent running the football, and he scares the living bejesus out of you when he has the ball in his hands and he's looking to run. So you've got secondaries that are compromise because you got to have somebody spying him sometimes in some cases two people spying him obviously that that really compromises you in terms of having the bodies to guard opposing wide receivers i get that but the flip side to it is that there's more film it's the national football league and you got to believe that mm. schematically somehow some way somebody will come up <laughs> with a way to make him throw the football more than run it on occasion. Again, we're talking MVP. I'm not saying he's not going to have a great year and he's not a great <laughs> talent. But I'm talking about in terms of MVP, I kind of think that mm -hmm. you can find a way to sort of neutralize him to Get some more degree on him. in terms of MVP discussion. <laughs> Well, what, Phil Bottom just going to demoralize the, the teams Last who have year. to watch the film. Let's not forget, real quick, Dan, he's on his rookie deal still. Russell Wilson and Tom Brady suck up a lot of the salary cap. Lamar is still on his rookie deal, meaning there are more resources going to other places on that team. All right, Dan, last word here. Here's the challenge for Lamar. Last year he led – go ahead, Molly. I'm sorry. No, no, you have the last word. That's It's all you. 
the challenge for Lamar. Last year, he led the NFL in touchdown passes and led the NFL in yards per rush and won MVP. Like, can you do that again? That's the, that is incredibly difficult to try and repeat in. And I'll make the point again. One of the great benefits scheme-wise was those three tight ends. And they, they traded Hayden Hurst. And I know he wasn't an incredible, impactful player per first-round pick. But I do want to see how they replace that because that would that is one of those pieces that made that offense so impossible to stop last year. But it's going to be really hard for Lamar to duplicate that season again. Mm -hmm. Dan, appreciate you listening to Time Cues. You'll be back with us in just a bit. I want to add, Russell Wilson has never had a career MVP vote. That's hard to believe. And also, I was surprised Kyler Murray was so high. Same uh -huh. odds. I know he got D-hop as Tom Brady. Guys, only four players have ever won back-to-back -back MVPs consecutive seasons in NFL history. Favre, Peyton, Montana, and Jim Brown. We will leave it there. Dan, we'll talk to you in just a bit. When we come back here on First Take, we got a little UFC to get into. Conor McGregor unleashes on Justin Gaethje on Twitter. Find out what he had to say after the break. <laughs> 